Creating a mail merge letter might seem like a bit of a daunting task at first, but it can actually be a lot easier than you might expect. For example, if you were addressing a letter to a series of people in a contact list, you'd want that letter addressed based on the first name, last name, address, city, state, zip code, etc. for each of the contacts on your list. But you can actually add a lot of that information in a relatively automated way by making use of blocks. Let's take a look at how we can add an address block, for example, to add multiple fields in a consistently formatted way for our mail merge letter. I'll go ahead and switch to the mailings tab on the ribbon. And the first thing, of course, that I need to do for this new letter that I'm just getting started with is to select the recipients. I need to specify the data that I'll be using as the contact information for this letter. And so I'll click on the Select Recipients button on the ribbon, and then I'm going to choose the Use Existing List option because I've already created an Excel spreadsheet that has the information I need for the mail merge, in this case, my contact list. I'll go ahead and click that Use Existing List option, and I'll navigate to my desktop where I've saved my Excel spreadsheet. And there it is, my Potential Advertisers spreadsheet that contains the contact information for potential advertisers. I'll go ahead and click the Open button, and I can specify that I want to use the information from the first sheet, and that the first row contains column headers. So that first row should not be used as one of the contacts for my mail merge. I'll go ahead and click the OK button to establish those options. And now we can take a look at inserting an address for this mail merge letter. And this is really just going to be a marker, a holding place, if you will, so that when I create the actual final letters, the information that I add here, the contact information, will be updated for each individual person in the contact list. So I've already put my return address up at the top right, as well as a date that will automatically update to the current date. And now I'm positioned and ready to insert the address block. In other words, if I were typing this letter by hand, this is where I would type the name and address of the person I wanted to send this letter to. But instead, I want to create a mail merge letter, and so I'm simply going to insert a marker that tells Word this is where you should insert the first name and last name, the address, the city, the state, the zip, all of the details for that contact. But I can do so by inserting just a single item, or at least it's going to seem like just a single item. I'll go ahead and click the Address Block button in the Write and Insert Field section of the ribbon on the Mailings tab, and that will bring up a dialog where I can specify the address block that I would like to insert. You'll see that I have the option to insert the recipient's name in a particular format, and also to insert the company name and the postal address. Down at the bottom, you'll see that we can also format that address according to the specific destination country, so that in different countries, for example, the details would be listed possibly in a different order. Over on the right side, I can see an indication of the actual layout, exactly what I will end up seeing within the document itself. And even better, I can navigate among the recipients, among those contacts in my spreadsheet in this case, so that I can see the information in the context of the actual source data. So I could choose, for example, not to have the company name inserted. You'll notice when I turn off that checkbox in the preview over on the right, the company name disappears as well. But in this case, I do want to include the company name, so I'll leave that checkbox turned on. And I can scroll through the list of recipient names. Now this obviously just shows us a general sample of how the name might appear, but I can choose one of those options and see it update over on the right. So for example, if I choose an option that includes the first name but not the last name, you'll see that the last name no longer appears over on the right. So I'm able to see a real-time update as I make changes to the overall settings on the left side, I'm able to see how that affects the preview based on my actual contact list over on the right side. This looks to be pretty well formatted, so I'll go ahead and click the OK button, and as you can see, an address block has been added. Now, this certainly looks unassuming, but that address block includes first name, last name, company name, address, city, state, zip code. It includes all of the details about the contacts in my source data. So, in this case, taking an Excel spreadsheet and mapping all of those fields just by inserting a single address block. So very, very simple in terms of being able to add a lot of information very quickly and easily, and I think that's something that you'll likely do on a regular basis when you're creating a mail merge letter. 
And once you've added that address block, you can then continue working on the letter, typing the text of the letter, your salutation, etc., until you've created the final letter, and then you can merge your source data, your contact list, with that letter so you'll have individual letters for each of those recipients.